Spokane or bust. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey, it's George the Antique Nomad. I am wandering through the West trying to get to my antique show this weekend in Spokane, Washington. I stayed over last night in Sheridan, Wyoming. I am going to get an oil change. You know, it takes some time and money to get across country. I figure I have to have enough business to justify about an extra $1,200 in expense to make these trips. And so, one thing I do along the way is shop to see if there's anything I can turn for a profit. And this Salvation Army just happened to pop up in this little town. Anything in dishware? Well, this looks like an older piece here. At least it has the style thereof. And yeah, this has some age with the star on the bottom. This is a Bennington style pottery. They have 15 on it, but it's got a big hairline crack, so no thanks. Well, there we go. I'm headed to Spokane. And look, there's an Expo 74 World's Fair plate from Spokane, the large size, which we don't see so often. And it's a whole dollar, so that's going with me. We got some Joseph Originals. These are the later birthday girls with the brown eyes rather than the black. But they're only $2 each. Now, the birthday numbers, they're kind of specific. The ones without the numbers really do sell better. So even though they're really cheap, I think I might not get them. Miniature clock is cute here. This is from the 70s. A dollar. Well, that's how much the real grandfather clocks are selling for now. And I know there's a lot of this transfer where this looks French, but this is very pretty. I really am fond of irises and all those. And this is German, actually. Three dollars, it's a perfectly fine price, and someone will get it, I'm sure. It's very pretty. These are Moonstone from the 1940s. It's a depression glass pattern, and it's cute with the opalescent edge. And these are really inexpensive, only a dollar a set. This is smart. They're pricing the Corel a little higher, but it's still only a dollar each. So if you're looking to match those old discontinued Corel patterns, it's a pretty good deal if they've got what you're looking for. That looks like something cool, and it's a great design, but look at that very perfect polished out bottom. That tells you that this is not an old piece of glass, and probably offshore rather than, well, offshore is sort of a general word, but what I'm saying is not Italian, not American, not super collectible. Mother's Day is coming, and they've got the Wedgwood 1972 Mother's Day plate, but it's $15. It does have the box and the paperwork, which are usually missing, but I just don't see a lot of upside in that. This is a nice old piece here. French. Luneville. Hand painted. I mean, again, for only a dollar, it's a great price. I just have so much stuff like this. This set, it was part of a set of three. And this is that old village green that ended up being part of Red Wing, 1940s era. There are collectors for this, it's very heavy, but it says $6 for a set of three and I only see one piece. This is vintage, we see it a lot. I've never really run into anybody who collects this though, even though I think it's interesting. It looks like tree branches and it's some sort of a very shiny glaze process that's done in a very random way to make that happen. I think it's likable. Somebody out there, if you collect this and know more about it, leave me a comment. I'd like to know more. I promise I will do that. Lots of purses. I don't see anything vintage particularly. This is a big store. Even though Sheridan's only a town of about 15,000, it's the largest town in northern Wyoming, so it is a market center for people from a long ways away, and I see they have a vintage section, so we're gonna go look at that. Ah yes, throw pillows. This is where they go. 50 cents a piece. So they have vintage coats. Now a fur would do better here, I would think, than elsewhere. So it's $70. And I usually get somewhere in the 100 range. Now 50 on this. Out of Wichita. Seems very short. Tree goes westward. Woodward, Oklahoma. That's a good look. Very ranchy, $60. Probably in the right hands that would sell for more money. But I'm not enough of a specialist in this to really have the customer 
And the really cool stuff up here, unfortunately, is not for sale. But they do have a neat display up on the mannequins. Looking scarves here. Nice and soft, but not what I was looking for. Well, this place is quite a catacomb. Here is the book section. We're going to spend a minute here. Because I could see where a neat old book might filter its way through a place like this. Especially because they do have other vintage things. Things are well divided, but I don't see anything old. Mostly frames. One older print here. Cute, but nothing real significant. It is old, though. You can tell by that old faux grain metal frame that that's going to be 1920s or 30s, and it's only a dollar. And they've got a little bit of everything, and certainly some stuff for obsolete computer parts and things that maybe you might need. And then a new charbroiler. $90 for this grill. I imagine that's a pretty decent discount from new. Now this is nice. Unlike Goodwill, they keep the new stuff to a certain area, which is fine. It's great that they're getting new stuff that they can sell. I just like the fact that they also have old stuff that I can sell. Robert Ortiz pottery, that's actually a pretty good price. Need old shaving mug or two. They've got some jewelry. I don't see anything really vintage for me though. The Corgi Harry Potters are probably a good piece of retail arbitrage for only five dollars a piece. Sheridan is the largest town in northern Wyoming, the largest town between Billings and Casper, so a lot of stuff comes here because it's on the way to Yellowstone, it's on I-90 between Seattle and Minneapolis, so there actually is some population and trading center base here that looks like it can support an antique store. We're gonna go see what that is. In front of the mint bar, this is a great old neon, this bucking bronco that is the Wyoming state symbol. You see it on their license plates. And across from this interesting theater facade for the Wyo Theater is Best Out West Antiques. So this is the place, it's the I saw coming into town last night because it's got all that neon that was lit brightly and I'm curious to see what they've got. It says it's an antique and collectibles mall. So there's a little shop called Sheridan Antiques that looks like it's got a lot of Pendleton and Western wear and Western memorabilia. There's a jewelry store. And then here is the antique mall. And they've got the Bucking Bronco on their logo as well. These were done in the 1970s, but even the 1970s Curtis prints are of value such an amazing depiction of the American West and he really captured a lot of the Native Americans, the final generation living as they had always lived. This space is called the Back 40. You're going to see a lot of Western memorabilia in Wyoming and points west of here. It's certainly something I sell well out west. But I'm looking for other things here because I figured those things will probably be priced high in Wyoming. Modernism, maybe not so much. That's an interesting red wing piece there. Little Italian jeweled box there. This Fenton is, ooh, $18. I think that's a pickup right there. The crimps on the handles will tell you who the maker is because each basket handle was done by a different person in the line and they had a different waffle to tell which was which. And then in front of these odd but interesting Roseville, I think that's Thorn Apple, if I remember right, is an early 1940s textured line from Fenton. They have Fenton question mark. They are correct about that. It is Fenton, and they are asking $22 for that. I think the basket's the better of the deal. Sorrento art from Italy. We're certainly seeing interest in the furniture done with these sorts of inlays in the early 1970s. So I'm sure these art pieces are right behind them. If you think of all the work that went into that, and the fact that they know who the artists are, $79 for the three pieces really seems pretty reasonable. Cheerio, isn't that cute? Little bar napkins, $11 the set. This copper miniature lamp is cute because it's got an Art Deco shade. If you got a chimney for it, it'd be a good deal at $9.50. 
PY of Japan is one of those companies like Old Howard that did really fun, really cute novelty wear. And it was brought in by National Pottery, so you see their mark underneath it. It is really sweet. $10 each on the smaller apple plates. The big bowl is 32 Those are not bad prices. PY is always sold for a premium because it's really cute and really good quality for that era. Here's a Fenton Lily of the Valley vase in a late 1970s color. Some people don't care for this color and some people are really partial to it. I have people who only collect that color. Just goes to show that how you display and how you style really means that anything can look good in the right context. It's just a question of personal taste. Well, this is sort of the West Coast Western Mountain State version of the white painted signs we see in antique stores in Georgia. All of this stuff is new. It might look cool. It might actually match what you're doing with your decor. That's great, but none of this is old. They do have wool serapes, and they seem to be priced at about $50 each, which seems reasonable. Let's see what the little carriage pin is, because that's cute. Not super high quality, needs a few stones. Five dollars. Do I want to have it fixed? Hmm. If it was a little less worn. This is Sarah Coventry. We see this one a lot, and it's a popular one for them. Sign on the back. And it's eight dollars. That one I think I'll get. I have a pretty steady market for this one every time I buy one. Oh, no, wait. It's got some little dents on the side. No, that matters. People want things to look right and polished. Jewelry is not something people will do as is, unless they're going to repair it or use the beads in some other manner. This thing has a rope chain. This looks like 60s or 70s. Collection of whole pottery. I always liked these ones that were suspended. I always thought that was a clever design. I like this with the people coming back from the fox hunt. This is a tie bar from about 1920. Women would also put ribbons and scarves on it to hold. $20. Well, here's a satin glass fairy lamp. It looks like the flower's painted inside. I'm not sure if that means it's really very visible or not. Let's take a closer look. Yeah, so this is a screen print flower inside the piece. Probably a lot cuter with the candle going through it so you see that. But I can't say that one impresses me. $18 on the golden tissue box. This looks Japanese, and it is. 1980s. Railroad date nails. I definitely see more serious railroad collectors in this part of the country. I like the design on the old gasoline can. That looks like something that we would see from maybe the 1930s. An old wicker wheelchair made by Gender Wheel Company. Oh, interesting. Offered in the 1902 Sears catalog. What is it offered for today is my question. Originally it was $21.75. Today it's $314.99, which seems like a random price. Here is an old clothes washer with the green 1930s vintage. The electric has been removed. It looks like a big pressure cooker, but it's actually the Cinderella electric clothes washer. I have this jug for sale. We see these more out west, of course, because they were made in Denver and shipped all over the west for use all through the mountain states and even out to the west coast. I was corrected, thankfully, by a viewer who explained to me that Catherine Holm is a place in Norway, not the designer's name. Funny how we get things in our head and just are wrong about them for a long time. This one's priced at 63 this one at 126 Those are pretty much going prices if you can find them in good condition like this without any chips. They're just that hard to get now. Everybody, everybody's been into those for years. The modernists just love them. These are Viking Epic, the ruby candle holders, and I don't see a price on them. So I'm going to go ask. Maybe I'll ask. First I'm going to see another piece because if I look at it and it's a million dollars then I'll know I don't care. But this is only $24 and they have it incorrectly marked Ellie Smith so that makes me think I might get a good deal on these. Priced at $400 it's the International by Ertl from about 1970. They made big ride on top ones similar to pedal cars. 
This one's in really good shape. It's got the Ertl pedals on it. Cute pieces of chalkware. The fish is Miller Studio from the 60s. This little guy, I guess that's toothpaste? I don't quite understand that one, but I guess he's practicing sartorial perfection. Here's a hard piece to get in Fiesta. This is the stick handle. It's the original yellow. You might be able to clean up some of those marks using wadding polish or never dull. $50 seems like a good price because you just don't see those very often. Let's see if this guy is old. I'm suspicious that he's not. I'm still suspicious that he's not. Likely Brazilian from 20 years ago. Now this is old yellow green Vaseline. It should glow under a black light. This is Victorian press glass. Looks like they've got a whole set for $80. These they have marked as early American press glass candlesticks and they're not. They're actually shelf risers. They were used a lot in drugstores. They would put glass shelves between those and use them to stand up in windows as displays. That's why these have turned purple because they've been in the sun a lot in their life. $50 is about the right price for them though. That piece is pretty new. On the other hand, this red wing with the roundup pattern on the back, that's a great old 50s pattern of dinnerware. And yes, it's expensive and yes, they pretty much all are. Worth getting if you can find them cheap. And of course we're in the part of the country where we expect to see Francoma in the wagon wheel pattern and these prairie green colors particularly and the desert gold. I like the ones with the brands. This one's the pulp of clay, but I think we have some Ada clay here too because this looks like a lighter color there. I have my desert sand colored one with me for the show in Spokane and mine's priced a little less than that, so that makes me feel good. I like the old private parking sign. A bunch of the 1950s cap guns in the $30 range, which is a typical selling price. Now the price is too high, but I love this set with the gyoshe and the pink and the sterling. That is really beautiful. Here's something worth considering. It's an old banjo. It's a five string. It's got the old style tighteners for the head on the outside. So this has some age, no back. No maker name, that's the only problem with it, so it's probably not an important maker, but it's only $100, and I really think this probably would be $200 in the right place. So I'm tempted by this. We'll see if they give any dealer discount. The Spartus bar clock that keeps time backwards is $20. That might actually be viable, but I've got to see if it works. There it is, running backwards, and the hours are backwards too. Silly novelty, and I love it, and they do sell. If they'll give a dealer discount, I might take that too. Here's an old number five Western stoneware from Monmouth, Illinois. This big old jug. Being in Wyoming, they would have gotten things from both directions, since they're kind of in the middle. I like this old sleigh bell set. It's $82, which is about right, but it is really neat. It's got a great ring. A lot of people use them on doors and shops. A big old rack full of tools, copper funnels, license plates. And then over here, car parts, including hood ornaments, which I like. But $59 is about right. This one is as is. I see the chrome coming off. Old Cadillac hubcap. Old rotary phone is cute, princess style. If it was just any other color, the beige is a little bland. The woman who was in here before I came in was really excited about this Victorian string holder and let's see what she saw in it that she liked. I think maybe it had to do with this rope style. It looks like a big ball of twine or rope and then it has Feb 14 1860 I believe is a manufacture date so that makes it pretty neat all in all. You had to have rope or twine around all the time. We didn't have scotch tape or shipping tape. You had to rope things together. This is $95. I don't think that's bad for a serious collector of these. That's pretty early. It's got early foundry methods. It's got the patented sign on the side. So it's a pretty neat thing that probably would have been made into the 1880s or 90s. I do like when I'm in a store and I see someone getting excited about something to either talk to them or at least try to eavesdrop a little and see what it is that excites them about the thing that they're collecting because that's another way to learn about new stuff that you might not think to look at on your own. 
And besides which, it's fun to share the joy of all this with collectors. Here's an interesting old tile for only $5. This is quite old. North, East, West, South. And the very lovely Grecian woman pouring herself what looks like a uh, champagne cocktail. This doesn't have a maker name on it to say that it's a very important tile, but for $5 it's definitely old. I think it's interesting enough. I'll get that. They do have some costume jewelry here. I see some cute pieces. This is a nice Trafari bracelet here. $68 with that very strong amber, honey amber and citrine combination, but I don't think that gives me a lot of room. In the back I like the Alfred Martinez Navajo handmade sterling earrings. They seem to have some, I'll try to zoom in on them here, they seem to have some colored precious stones in that box to the right. This blue pin here is probably Czech and I like that very much. They have a lot of things in the $10 and $20 range in earrings. Some of them are signed. Some of them you just have to like or they match something you've got. But I love looking at all this shiny stuff. Pretty colors there with that pink and blue. There's a very good necklace, that black one. Diella and Lister. I'm going to ask to look at that. It's a nice Bristol glass. The large pink floral vases in the back. 95 and then the little portrait vases that are neoclassical up front are 65. Still think that stuff's a good deal for what it is. And then these big Italian jeweled vases, $40 each. I'm starting to get a little pile here in Sheridan and I'm excited that I decided to spend the morning here. I figured since I had to get the oil changed anyway, it was a good chance to take a look around here and then I'll do a serious piece of driving today so that I can be at the show for setup tomorrow morning. Princess Peggy is the prototypical American housewife of 1950. Unfortunately, she has broken leg, but she's a really neat store display. This very handsome piece of furniture with the burl finish is European. You can tell by the stoutness and roundness of the base. Probably German, possibly Belgian, and it's priced at $1,800 with that big marble top. The proportions are just different than an American piece would be. We're near the Crow Reservation where Custer lost his life in his last stand. Oh, and the lives of all of the people he was commanding because he was not actually a very good general. And so we see a lot of things traded out of the surrounding Plains Indians up into the Crow Reservation. And there's some really cool stuff that they have for sale here. They're guaranteeing the authenticity of these stone hammers and war clubs. I believe them. I like the high cot moccasins over here. These are 20th century, but what neat beating, and they're $187. Here's two Hana clown figures by Begay. The Begay family are known for lots of different things in Navajo artistry. I can't really get you a much better look at them there. I do really like the child set with the belt leggings and moccasins and the Shoshone or Plateau design gauntlets are really cool. And then we have this neat old happy guy here who is a juicer and reamer set, $35, not a bad price. That's from about 1940, I've sold those for more. Some early hull pottery here. A lot of people don't recognize these hull pieces with the pink and blue wash, but with that round H makes it hull pottery. These are going to be 19 teens and 20s era. And then look at this cool beatnik water over in the corner here, hanging out next to the twin Winton lamb salt mixers. Whoops. He has a mermaid sitting with him, which makes him even better. This guy is the pinnacle of coolness, but he has lost whatever he was holding, which is too bad because he's only $20. Lego Japan, if I knew what he was supposed to be holding, I might be able to forgive the condition problems because he's a really unusual one. But I don't know exactly what, oh I see, it was a fishing pole. So maybe it was just a stick or a piece of metal. He was also smoking a little cigarette. You can get replacements for those. Cute Miller High Life beer girl. This is a neat little advertising piece. This one looks like it has some age. She is priced at $35, which for her 
age and condition is perfectly fine. I like the Rickwood pottery piece for 135 and then that wonderful Art Nouveau mirror surround or picture frame. Look at the hair and the way it just turns into that sinuous gracefulness. $85, that does not seem bad for that. Several pieces of McCoy here, including the tulip with, surprisingly, the original label. You almost never see a paper label on a piece of McCoy. They're well marked, so you can certainly tell what they are. But the paper label is unusual. They mostly were washed away. And then the butterfly pattern, which is one of my personal favorites. And here's a rustic tea set. I have a viewer, a very lovely viewer, who I would really like to get this set for, but that is full retail price. There's the bed base that goes with it in the rustic line. Well, we just had Easter, and wouldn't these have been fun? 75 for the pair is not bad for these 1960s felted paper mache German candy containers, especially this size. Because this is also a crafts gallery, you've got handmade soap, you have recently made bold cozies and things like that. And you also have this display, which is attractive, but these are not really old pieces. These are, though. So it's definitely a mix. And again, this is how most people do things, is they mix old and new. You just have to know as a shopper which you're getting if you're buying. The Royal Lace Bowl for 25 is a good price. They sell for about $10 more than that. I passed one up for 15 at a thrift store in Kentucky and have kind of regretted it. New York World's Fair. We may be far enough from there for them to not care about this. Let's see what they have it priced. $5, I'd say that is correct. A couple of cute and not very expensive pins from the Second World War era there on the left. A lot of painted metal and fewer rhinestones because of material restrictions at that point. This says sold, see so you know what a great old sleigh this is. I would love to know what they paid for it, but the tag is gone. Otherwise I would snoop, because that's a good way to learn about the market and what things are actually selling for is to see something with the sold sign. The old Zenith wave magnet radio, the short wave, very popular in working condition, 160 is about a fair price for it. It opens up back here. And then you see all the guts. It looks like it's very clean and it's got the big wave magnet, which was the thing that allowed you to get the short wave. You would hang this up in your room and that way you could actually get the reception that needed for that. This is going to date to about the time of the Second World War. They're very popular with radio collectors. And what a neat old bunch of Navajo rugs it appears that we have here. This one is an eye dazzler. They have that priced at $1,600. This one's very nice. It is priced at nine. They don't tell us about the patterns or tribes, and this is something that requires a little bit of study. $850 on that one. Now this one has some running of colors. Of course, a lot of these colors weren't color fast. That's something to be aware of. And this sold on layaway, but darn, they took the tag off of the cart too, because I would have loved to know how much they got for that. Yeah. Oh. We've got one more level, and then I've got to hit the road. This is fun how they've taken this Ames or yeah, Thonet so style good. chair and yeah. used cowhide on it. I assume that it needed to be because of something that was wrong with it. These are old stampers from New England textile mills. We usually see these from India. So these are old and these are selling for about 80 or $90 each. Great Northern Railroad, the Empire Builder, they had Reinhold Weiss do their drawings of the Native Americans along the route and they became very popular and are still very popular collectibles today. Spurs can be absolutely valuable. Sterling silver, $500 for the pair. These seem to be signed by various companies and makers and that makes a real difference. I like these chairs very much. They say that they are Brayton Lukart by Wassily and Han Lukart. Well, Wassily of course is very famous for the square chair that they did. You saw that one on the set of Frasier. 
These do not appear to really be old, though. So even though I like them, and even though it's an old design, they would not be for me. Then we've got a bunch of Plains Indian moccasins. This one with the windmill style design is Sioux. These are Northern Plains to the left. I like these with the strawberries. So much fun to see all the craft and all the time that went into these. A lot of these straps are Sioux patterns, which makes sense since we're not far from the land of the Sioux in the Dakotas. Ah, and here's something very famous. Custer's last fight, and there's Custer right in the middle, seeming very noble just before he's hacked to death. However, that isn't exactly how it really happened. He was probably killed by a woman as they shoved owls into his ears so he could hear better. That was their punishment for him because he was breaking the treaty he had helped engineer with them after previous Indian battles by going into the Black Hills, discovering gold and causing a gold rush and a bunch of settlers to come. In this pretty spot, with the territorial view, on that knoll, George Armstrong Custer and all of his men were killed by a confederation of the Crow, the Lakota, and other Native American tribes in 1876. Custer got a great ride in history for a while, but his truth has come out. He was last in his class. He was only promoted because the Civil War was happening. He did very well at the Battle of Gettysburg by doing a very foolish maneuver that just happened to work. And then he did another foolish maneuver that didn't work at Little Bighorn. I've sold some of this over the years. I like it. I know how to study it. I wish I knew it more just looking at it. This elk hide beaded jacket is just beautiful. Look at the fringe. Look at all the work on it. A real expert in these would be able to tell you age by the color of the beads. They'd be able to tell you the origin and possibly even down to the individual maker if they're very knowledgeable. Some of the native tribal folks are the ones to ask about some of this kind of stuff. 4,000 on this one. These look like they're early 20th century to me. They're just gorgeous. These folks are selling their glass case. I guess because the stuff in it isn't really necessarily showcase stuff. You get to a point where you realize that sometimes open display works better. Well, if you're enjoying this video, please like it, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. Please check out the other social links in our description, and you can check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, where you can get appraisal information. I finally got the Governor's Mansion appraisal done for Washington State, so I'm taking on new appraisal work. I am happy to help any way I can, and now let's get back to this video and have more fun looking. The little Bakelite crib toy is cute there at $65. Those used to sell for double that, but I've noticed that the crib toys are not as well understood or as widely collected as they used to be. Here's something we see a lot. I've had people send me these in appraisals and think they're worth a lot of money. They're not. These are 1980s vintage. They're cute. This one's 55. That's probably as much as you're ever going to get for one. It says Union Pacific Railroad. It was never used on the railroad. It's just a novelty. Probably never been spat in. Well, Booth 221 is 25% off, and I am hoping that this is them because they've got some Fenton and if the prices are right I might grab a few more pieces especially the fairy lamp there and the custard piece. Let's take a look. Ah, so this was only 15 to begin with. Oh, but look at the big chip. Darn. Alright, let's hope for better condition on the fairy lamp. It's only $15. Doesn't seem to have any major chipping or problems. And that's true here, too. It's got the Fenton mark. Oh, yes. Wait. Chip on bottom half, it says. Well, darn. I am going to have to believe them. Because they looked at this piece for a long time before they put a price on it. Well, that is an honest dealer. The chip was on one of the hobnails. Somebody must have bumped it against something else. The Hollywood Regency. Imperlux globe lamp with the cherub. Very schmaltzy 1960s style. It's 44 with the discount. This cow is super patriotic, I guess. And gee, surprise, it's made in China. They have a little different idea what American patriotism is than my notion of it. 
It's 20 bucks, but the print on this 70 suitcase is pretty cool. Aw, and look at the little Tuffet hat for $18. You knew I was going to do it, right? <laughs> Big old Fenton piece here in an unlikely place with a bunch of tins and planes. I'm hoping that means it's inexpensive for some reason and that it's not as is, but it is as is. Darn it. Keep turning up the as is on the fountain here today. This place is really extensive. I mean, there's another corner everywhere you go. These look like Caliente by Haldeman from California. They're not signed, but a lot of his stuff wasn't. It's three pieces together with the lilies in the center bowl. These are going to be from about 1940, and they are asking $27 for the trio. Not a bad price, but I just see a stock number. I can't say for certain that that's a Haldeman line, but it's the most similar to the ones I've seen of his. I really like the old coffee tins from the store displays back around 1890 or 1900. This would have been every country store, and that one's priced at $650. Instead of avocado or almost Kelly Green goblets, it's by Bartlett Collins from the 1970s out of Oklahoma. Good price on that. This would have been given out in the teens by Mosaic Tile out of Zanesville, Ohio, as a trivet to be used so they could show you how great their tile is. You can't read much of this anymore, but it's basically talking about that this is very durable tile and we have all sorts of patterns and you should come and get it and do your whole house in it. $20 on that. Cute western tin toys in here. And then the very famous motorcycle. The piece you see from the 1940s and 50s. An old Buffalo Bill still bank. That's a very hard one to find. It's not in perfect condition. They want 1100 for it, but it's a really tough one to get. I believe when you drop the coin, his rifle raises. One last little cubby hole here. This might have been where the safe was. I'm judging by these very thick concrete walls. 50% off. But I would say with good reason, although there is one tonala bowl here that looks like it might be interesting. It was $32. It would be $16 now. It's got the Ken Edwards mark. I think I might just have to get that. She's very springy and jaunty. That's cute. $24. Empire is the maker of that. It's transfer wear and it's a little worn, but there's the Empire China label. Judging by the dress, that's going to be around 1915. These folks were ranchers out here in Wyoming. $75 on this 1940s era Mexican throw is really not a bad price. It's got good color, it's older, and it's in good condition. And it's large. This is a neat crazy quilt. Blaine and Logan, 1884. So it's a political quilt. They also have some Grand Army and the Republic ribbons in here. So this is a little more unusual. And that's why they had an appraisal done. And the appraiser said that it's somewhere in this vicinity of price, 275 to 300. And in the right hands, it probably would be at a political convention more maybe than a quilt convention. These are not old, but they're fun, the little horse leg tables. There may be older versions, but I've seen these recently. Behind it is a cool old incubator. Columbus, Ohio, priced at 700 that would mainly be as a table in a house. It seems like a lofty price, but it is cool. A lot of nice quilts here. And they've got some good information on some of them. I like this one at 175 Made by Effie Cooper, who was bedridden most of her life. It was made to be used in a boarding house in Sheridan, Wyoming. So local interest. That's pretty cool. Now this looks like something that was done probably in the 1970s or 80s, but it's well done and it definitely has an old look and a lot of handwork to it. It's $65. I think someday somebody will really prize this lamp and it will be worth considerably more than that. Boy, there is another corner everywhere we go. I am completely lost in this place at this point. 35 on that vintage Mexican weaving. 
Did I go that way? It's such a catacomb here, I'm not sure. Let's try one more time just to see if I missed anything. Because I have found a couple things down here. Oh yes. Okay, I've been here. I recognize it now. All right, then up the stairs we go. This looks like a rainbow glass decanter with the rigory and no price. Darn it. Odd color. It does have some staining. I guess I'll leave it. Up the stairs we go. Looks like this was a department store originally, so it lays out well for this. Well, thank you, Sheridan, Wyoming. Thank you, viewers. I am happy that I got some more cool things. I feel like I am very, very, very well stocked for the show in Spokane now. I am going to have to hit the road. I've got 10 hours of driving, and then tomorrow morning I get up and we set up for the show. So, with no further ado, I will sign off, but it is great to see all of you. Please check out the social media and links in the description, and we'll see you again from someplace fun along the road of antiques and vintage. There's back road for you somewhere. Bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now.